Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at a brand new feature in the Tokyo release of ServiceNow to bulk update and delete records all without needing to script. If you need to perform a one-off update of a lot of records, what options do you have? You could create a flow using the update record action to cycle through some records and do it that way, or you could write a script. There are many reasons why you wouldn't need to do this. Uh, perhaps the import that you have executed is not quite right, or was incorrect. Some of the values of the data that was imported uh, were incorrect and you need to correct them. It may be that the data model that you are dealing with has updated and that field values need to be changed from one value to another value. Uh, there may be demo data that you want to update. There may be many reasons uh, you need to do this. So as I said, there is now an easy way to do this in ServiceNow all without scripting. So let's take a look. We start off first of all by going to System Data Management and there are two new modules here, Delete Jobs and Update Jobs. So let's start with Update Jobs. And before I go ahead and create an update job, let's have a look at the records I'm going to update. So I've got here a list of records. In particular, these first two here I'm going to update. Let's just say that for some reason, the uh, assignment group and the category of the incidents here just need to be updated. They were just imported incorrectly or whatever. So let's do that. So in my uh, form here for one of those incidents, it's just a regular incident. So we're going to go ahead and update the category from inquiry help to hardware and we'll also take care of the assignment group as well and change that from software to hardware okay pay attention also to this reassignment count field okay at the moment it's zero because this is a new incident i've just created it and when i created the incident i set the initial value for assignment group to software okay so let's go ahead back to our update job and click on new the first thing we need to do is to select a table. Okay, so let's select incident. And then we can specify the condition. So in our case, the short description contains, I think it was just test update. So we've got a preview button here just to confirm that the records that will be updated are the ones that we want to be updated. So here, that's correct. Two records, we want to update two records here. Okay. And then we just go ahead and specify what field values we want to change. So in our case, it's going to be the uh, category on the one hand. We'll change that to hardware. And then we'll also take care of the assignment group as well. And uh, so that is also hardware. Okay. All right, these final two checkboxes here, I'm going to leave as they are. Okay, so there is the option here for having this update actually recorded as an update. So in other words, the, the timestamp for the update will be updated and uh, a record will also be made of who executed this update. In, in this case, it's going to be me because I'm going to execute this job. And the second option here is that you have the ability to turn off your engines and business rules. So when the update is executed, do we want to have all the business rules, flows, workflows, whatever uh, being triggered as a result of this update, yes or no. But I'll just keep both of those activated for the time being. So I'll click on continue. And as I said, you can actually schedule this uh, for some point in the future, run at and you just click on the calendar, select a date and time, the system will take care of that. But we're not gonna be very patient. Uh, we're just going to execute this right now. So I will go ahead and click on execute now. Okay, proceed. It's just a warning to say, yes, we are going to update records. Let's do it. Okay, so that's executed now. Before we go to the execution results, uh, let's have a look at our incident, the form here. We can see that the category has changed to hardware. The assignment group has also changed. And also the reassignment account has been updated here. That's actually the result of a business rule. And because we had that checkbox ticked to say, yep, 
execute those business rules, this field was updated accordingly. Okay, if we go to our list, and let me just do a quick refresh here, we can see that the first two incidents, uh, actually the second two, uh, the second group here of two <laughs> records has been updated to hardware. Okay, so that works. Let's go back to our execution results there. That will actually take us back to that job that we created here. Okay, and uh, we do have the option of rolling back. So if for some reason, the update that we performed just now in order to correct data has somehow been incorrect <laughs> and we need to correct our correction, uh, we can actually roll back. So if I actually go to view rollback context, first of all, we get some details here of what was changed and updated as a result of that update that we just executed. So if we roll back, what records are going to be affected? Because it won't necessarily be just the incident record or the target record uh, or records that we've updated. There could also be uh, other records, related records that need to be updated uh, as well. Okay, so um, so we've got a list here of rollback records, including the two incident records here. Okay, and let's take a look, a closer look at our incident here, just to see what's actually being recorded in the audit trail. So if I go to my context menu and go to history and go to list, an incident is a task table. All task tables are classified as audited tables by default in the platform, which means uh, every single change is recorded. So uh, we can see here uh, that uh, the first update after the initial creation of the record, so the update number here is one. Uh, we changed those values here, those three fields, and they were performed or updated by myself through this job. Okay. Let's go back now and do a rollback. And let's see what happens. Uh, yes, we do want to roll back, so just confirm that. Okay. All right, we'll close that. We'll go back to our list. We'll just do a refresh here. So those two incidents, those update records here, uh, have now been rolled back uh, to inquiry help and software respectively. If I actually go back to the incident record here and we'll take a look at our values here. Okay, they are as we originally had them. And if we come back to the history here, what you will find is that the initial update that we made through that job is recorded, but the rollback is not. So just something to keep in mind um, when you're doing updates, if you do want to have those changes recorded here in the audit trail uh, or not, okay? Because the rollback that we just executed is not recorded here. All right, let's go back to our incident. Let's do one more test. Let's come back to my update jobs. And we'll create a new one. So that one has been executed now. We can't go and run it again. We actually have to create a new job. So again, I will select the incident table. And I will specify the same filter. So where the short description contains um, so update test or test update. Can't remember. Let's find out. Preview. Two records. Yep, that's right. Okay, and let's just do the same update again. So the first field was category. We'll make that hardware, and then we'll make the assignment group equal to hardware as well. And this time, I'm going to deselect these two here. Okay, and uh, save that, or just click on continue. As with every, any update that you perform, you'll have to just keep in mind what effect that may have on other records, such as SLAs and so forth, that may be related to it. 
Okay, and we'll just execute this now. Proceed. So we should find that the result is kind of the same, not quite. Let's have a look. We'll go back to our list. We can see that the category and assignment group have been updated uh, accordingly, so that's fine. Okay, uh, But if we actually go back to this record here and have a look at our history, or actually before we do that, have a look at the reassignment account that has not been updated. Okay, So we kind of rolled back to software, we updated again. The reassignment account didn't update because we deselected the option to run business rules. Okay, And if likewise, if we go to our history here and take a look at the list, uh, we'll see here there's also no record of that second update that we've made because we deselected the option to you know, make a, or track those changes and to record the uh, who and uh, when the update was um, executed. All right. So that's, uh, as I said, a really easy way in which you can update records in ServiceNow without needing to script. Okay, so let's take a look now at how we can bulk delete records in ServiceNow without needing to script. So if you wanted to do that now, what options do you have? Yes, you could script. You could also create a flow and use the delete record action this time, again, cycling through some records to remove. Or you could even use Table Cleaner. But Table Cleaner is more for getting rid of older data on a regular basis, such as import set data, uh, removing log entries that are no longer required or uh, getting rid of older flow contexts that are no longer needed. But what if you wanted to execute a one-off deletion of records, for example, import a data that has just been performed incorrectly, you've got the wrong data in, it's not quite right, you want to get rid of it and try again, uh, or you want to just clean up some demo data or test data that you may have in a non-production instance of ServiceNow, well, there's an easy way to do this now. Uh, using these delete jobs, again, under the new system data management application. So before we start, let's take a look again at the instance we're going to remove uh, these two records here with the short description demo to delete one and two. Okay, so similar to update jobs for our delete jobs, we just need to create a new job. And again, we can execute it straight away or we could schedule it to be executed sometime in the future. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and specify the incident table. Okay, I will select incident. And again, my filter condition here, my criteria will be where the short description contains test delete. Actually, that's incorrect. It should actually be demo to delete. So let's just preview that. Two records, great. Okay, so similar to updating records, we've also got this option here to run business rules or engines. So whether we want business rules, workflows, flows, etc., uh, being triggered as a result of this deletion. So let's click on continue and keep that box selected. Okay, now some of you may be familiar with cascade delete rules. Uh, so which determine what happens if a record is deleted, what happens to all the related records do we keep them? Do we just remove the reference to uh, that record that's been deleted? Do we delete the record as well, that related record as well or not? There are some other options available. So at the moment, um, in our record count here, we don't have any records appearing. If I click on Preview Cascade down here, we'll actually find out you know, what records will be deleted. Okay, so at the moment... Uh, we've got uh, two incidents and two SLEs, okay? So if I go to my record here, my record to be deleted, we can see down the bottom here we've got an SLE, okay? So that will also be deleted as well as a result of the cascade delete rules, okay? Depending on what configuration you set up, they may not be deleted, but in this case... Yeah, they're going to be. All right, so we'll just go ahead and execute that. Warning, yes, we are going to delete records. Proceed. Okay. 
Okay, and that's done. So if we come back to our list here and just refresh, we should only have two records here now. So those two records are gone. And if I come back to this page here and refresh, we should get an error to say that the record hasn't been found. Yep, record not found. There you go. Okay. Let's have a look at the execution results again. In other words, that job that we just created and executed. Okay, so similar to when you update records, you also have the possibility here after deleting records to roll back and to put those records back into their rightful place if you've made a mistake. So uh, we can have a look at the rollback context again. Um, we'll give you a little bit more detail on what records were deleted and maybe some other related records that were deleted in that process. Uh, if we come back, oops, let's go back to our delete jobs here, this one, and we will execute the rollback. Okay, so let's do that, rollback. Okay, yes, we want to roll back. Close. Again, like with everything you do in the platform, if you're doing like a mass update or a mass delete of records, just plan it out. Just make sure that, you know, what you're updating, what you're deleting is actually what you want, that, you know, any related records that may be affected are updated or deleted in your plan. Okay, so you don't have any little surprises. <laughs> okay, so if we come back to our list and refresh, we've got the two records back there. And if I come back to this page where the record was not found, because we can see in the URL that there's a reference to the sys ID to that record. So if I do a refresh of this page, the same sys ID is retained, which means that record that we deleted, it's just put back where it was before. No changes are made uh, to that sys ID. So any references uh, to this uh, will still work. Okay. And we should also have the SLA here as well. Okay, everyone. So that's it. That's a really nice new feature in Tokyo for mass bulk updates and deletions of records without needing to script. So I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you next time.